Hi, in this video, I am going to show you how to log in and out of App Inventor and also some of the features of App Inventor. So once you go to the App Inventor site, you're going to log in with your Gmail account. It's up to you. Uh, your teacher may have a specific account that they want you to log in with. And once you have logged in, you are going to be looking at a screen that is something like this. And as you can see, I have quite a few apps. You may only have a couple, or this might even be your first app. You will generally see this sign as you sign in. It will change over time. And the next thing that we're going to look at is the different components. I'll be using this document, and your teacher may give you a link to that document. And as you can see, the first things here are the palette and the designer button. So let's take a look at those. Over here, this is where you see your palette and over here, your components and over here, your properties. Here I have a pretty simple app opened right now. So let me just show you a few of those features. For example, um, if I scroll down here, I can see that there are two media pieces, sometimes people call them assets, that have been uploaded. One is this smiley face, and this other one is the recording. And when I'm looking over here at the palette, this is where you can take something and drag it onto the screen. So for example, I'm going to drag a button on and here you can see that the button is here. If I want to change how that button looks, I can go over here to the properties. I could make it bold if I wanted to. I could make it italic. I could change the font size of it. I could change the name of it, which I'm going to do right away because I wouldn't necessarily want to have it called text for button two. Um, so I'm just going to have it say press button for now. And I can put that there. And if I want, I can have it centered, which is how I usually like to have things. And by default, it is set up to be visible and the text color is black. I could change that if I wanted to, for example, to something like bright green. And I could also even change the height, the width. I could change what picture shows up. You could really do a lot of things with this. I can even change the background color. So I'm gonna change it to something wacky like orange, but I can see that doesn't allow my other part to show up very well. So let me try red. Okay, so now I am going to lastly just show you one more important feature, the rename feature. So it's important to keep track of what you're doing. In a minute, you'll see the blocks side. So I might want to rename this press button. And I know that that might seem a little bit vague. So I'm going to call it press button for disappear. And I'll explain more about that in the other video. And I'm actually going to go also back to this one and I'm going to change this one. Um, I'm going to change the text so that it says press the button press button to make smiley disappear and then i'm going to have a look at it to make sure it looks okay and it looks fine so this is the designer side only the last thing that i'm going to show you is that each of these drops so here we were only working with the user interface as you scroll through here, and you may want to take a self-guided tour, you'll see that there are arrangements that you can use. 
There is a bunch of different media. If you wanted to have a player or a camcorder, lots of different things. Here, these are some of the um, sprites that you can use when things are moving. Here you have ways that you can import maps. These are different ways that your app can use sensors. That could be for timing, shaking the tablet, lots of different options. Social is for sharing apps and putting things out into the world. The storage refers to if you are going to be reusing the same app, you can store it within the app and then you could also store it within the cloud. There are several different ways that you can connect. The experimental draw is something that people are working on from time to time. And there is also a Lego Mindstorms connector if you use Lego Mindstorms. And lastly, if you had something that you wanted to import into the extension part.